There's been a bit of buzz on my channel about my last videos in this series, which was supposed to be the last episode, but it seems I need to clarify some things. First off, the issue of the Fat Buddha. I've heard three different reasons for the origin of this well-known icon to the West. One reason is that Buddha is claimed to have said that after enough time, his message would have been forgotten and another would arise to discover his message. Many people tried to fulfill this messianic prophecy, including a rather portly monk. Another is that it is an infusion of Chinese or Japanese gods of wealth and prosperity into Buddhism. There are probably as many splits in any religion or belief system as there are in Christianity. There's even a purgatory concept of Buddhism called the Pure Land Buddhism. The reason why I used the Fat Buddha image was because I was told by a woman from India that the Fat Buddha was the Buddha before enlightenment. Being a pampered prince, he was undoubtedly very well fed. The scriptures claim him to say that his skin was as white as snow and a servant kept an umbrella on him at all times in the sun. Okay, now on to other issues. Specifically the fact that I seem to have trampled on some people's sacred cows in terms of emotions. Emotions are what make us. They are the motivating, driving force for many of the things we've accomplished, but only when we use them and are not being used by them. Hollywood has created a straw man argument idealizing emotion as what makes us amazing and special. The mix and range of emotions and the ability to utilize and appreciate them does make our species pretty special but it is our ability to reason that takes the utilization of these brain drugs to a whole new level. If we use them as tools and not escapes or dependencies, we can do amazing things. Hollywood also creates the belief that it's either all or nothing in emotion, when emotion works on different levels and doses. They assume that if you try to suppress your emotions, you must be heartless like Spock or a robot. Many times, if you can control and suppress your emotions, you can see the situation more clearly and fix it instead of wallowing in drama. Then you can enjoy yourself and enjoy the emotional satisfaction from accomplishing something. Emotions are good when one is not addicted to them. However, in the case of, say, an alcoholic, addicts have to abstain from drinking, while responsible users just get warnings to be aware and be responsible. Brain drugs are like getting your drink spiked by your own body. You never even notice that it's different from the norm because it's snuck up on you. Your reality is twisted and unrealistic, but you have nothing to compare it to. This is what the purpose of most psychiatric drugs are supposed to do. Give you a mindset to work towards so that you won't be addicted any longer and remove the emotion you are addicted to until you can use it responsibly and in a healthy manner. I found that when I try and explain Buddhist philosophy to someone with bipolar disorder, I get the most violent reactions. Bipolar disorder involves a rush of very driving energetic emotions called mania, where the person feels like they are on top of the world and can do anything. If they could feel like this all the time, they could probably do just about anything. Many great uh, artists have bipolar. However, the brain has its limits, and when it realizes that it's given the brain too much of this drug, it cuts the drug off, causing a serious emotional crash, usually leading to depression. Lithium and other drugs are used as a way to attempt to control the output of these manic chemicals so that the crashes aren't so bad. Unfortunately, when they feel the emotions of a normal brain level, it feels like they're a walking zombie because the tolerance to the natural drug has not yet worn off. I've heard from many people on these drugs. They'll say, I can't feel emotions anymore. People trying to clean up from heroin, cocaine, and meth tend to say the same things. The drugs do what nicotine vaccine does by blocking the ability to use this drug so that a person can begin to fight the addiction and learn the mental constructs that the majority of people already have to function without the manic drugs driving them. When they're introduced to the emotional levels that the average person feels, it feels like no emotion at all. They have built up such a tolerance to the manic drugs that having a normal level feels like hell. One thing I want to point out is that bipolar is a seriously difficult disease to deal with. They have had the equivalent of being born with a monkey on their backs, and the drugs keep being produced naturally. However, psychiatric diagnosis is not a victim card, but there to give you a game plan. 
The purpose of the drugs are to give you an example of how your brain should feel and respond if your brain is working properly. If you can succeed at replicating that mindset using tricks like self-hypnosis, over time you can train your brain to cope with the world around you in a healthy way. Over time, psychiatric drugs should allow the brain's tolerance to these emotions to lower so that the normal levels will let the person feel again. But until that happens, it will feel as if you have almost no emotions at all. However, many people who are bipolar will end up not taking their meds because it's like having to take a drug to inhibit the effects of a good natural trip. Only those with willpower of steel can really maintain it. They will also rationalize why they need to feel the extreme emotions they are missing out on thanks to literature and Hollywood idealizing emotions, especially when they make the claim that emotion is what makes us human. Well, not quite. Most of our emotions and traits can be seen throughout the animal kingdom. However, there are a few things that separate us clearly from animals. One of those is patience and the ability to wait. A study was run where a subject learned that the longer they waited and abstained from eating M&Ms, the more they would get in the end. Human subjects beat out all species who were given this test, hands down except for the chimp, oddly enough. The scientists theorize that the reason that chimps beat us is that M&Ms hold ridiculously less value to a western lifestyle human than it does to a chimp, otherwise chimps would have invented agriculture by now, if they had more patience than we do. Having patience to suspend emotion for a little bit to have a big payoff is very human, and something that separates us from animals. During my depression, I had a serious problem with assuming that everyone was judging me. It kept me shy and awkward and antisocial as I felt as if I was under a microscope all the time in public. After getting my wisdom teeth removed, I was given some Vicodin for the pain. The grocery store was in walking distance, so my roommate and I walked to the store. Vicodin numbs the senses, and for the first time, I realized that no one was actually paying any attention to me. It was just my perception of people that made me think they were all judging me. After that, when I felt shy around people, I tried to emulate the effects of the Vicodin, and over time and practice, I was able to be around people and not feel self-conscious. Buddhism is a 12-step program of self-reliance, in the case of Buddhism, an 8-step program, and that involves eliminating all of our addictions, even to our own brain drugs. Buddhism wants us to enjoy our emotions and use them, but not be enslaved by them, which is something only a human has the mental capability to do.